Yeah, uh, like in terms of the character balance of this game, I feel like it's fine. There's a couple of outliers that are a little stronger than others. Uh, you know, I personally think Ramlethal and, and Nagoro Yuki right now are those outliers. But I feel like a lot of people have had like, I don't know, misconceptions about like what's super weak in this game because I mean, there was the time where we all thought Gold Lewis was like the worst character in the game and it wasn't even fucking close, right? And then right now, nobody can pin, uh, pinpoint uh, Jack O's placement. I think pre-patch before the FD changes, uh, the, the patch literally right before this one, I think Gold Lewis was Tom Fly. I think the character was fucked up, like beyond belief. I think that character was insane because of his ability to just, the second he knocked you down, it was, or, or put you in block stun, you lost half of your life because you could not FD him out and if you tried to FDM out, you lost all of your meter. And then he still got to stay in because you're FDing and it's plus uh, two more frames to to the edge of it or to everything, right? So that's like the big problem, in my opinion, was like back then it was like, oh, I'm I'm trying to push him away because I made a single mistake and then I just fucking died from chip damage, you know, because guard breaks in this game, you can't wire see them. They're plus 80 billion, 7,462, right? Exact number, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, um, and that that character did damage. He did damage, right? Obviously, his defense was butt flakes, right? Uh, that was the that was the funny part about this character is when I wasn't sure if I could say he was like bottom one when he first came out and everybody was talking about it. But what I was sure about was like I know for sure this character has very few defensive capabilities. It is all on system mechanics on him outside of just doing churning the butter super right because like you can 360 you can go down with the system and that might work out or you might just explode right so like yes his his defense did make everybody else oppressive against him for sure the problem with that statement however in my personal opinion was the range on behemoth typhoon and the way air behemoth typhoon works it was very very hard to 6p uh, him and it's and it, it, it's more so difficult to anti-air him if he's doing it now because now he just has he has flying behemoth typhoon after they gave him that buff right so he can do that shit now um i i don't know like now now i i can't really place him as well uh i i feel less confident about how strong that character is because of the fd change the fact that you can push him out now is nice it is very very nice i'm super happy about it because that character was an abomination on offense <laughs> Because, I mean, what's... All right. So what is the most... Probably the most thing... Uh, the most annoying thing that everybody hates in this entire game right now? Uh, since launch all the way to now, I'm almost certain that that is guard breaks. The guard break system is fucking whack. Um, and they've tried to make it so that you can't go into guard breaks as much as possible for this, uh, for this game. Because like, so, so, so like, uh, for example, when I'm doing soul bandit revolver knockdown, I actually can't do Fafner without getting thrown anymore. Right. Well, all right. There's an exception or two, but I did not, uh, remember to learn the route. So I forgot and I never did it to you, uh, mutator. So I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, if he does bandit revolver knockdown, he can't do Fafner anymore. Right. Uh, there's some other instances of other characters guard breaks no longer being able applicable in every single situation, uh, obviously, but guard breaks were just are just uh fucking stupid because they do so much chip damage on average uh most guard break if not every guard break move does that much chip damage um so you're forced to fd them usually uh and before the patch it was plus two to their frame advantage already so like you're you're plus 19 on a guard break for some characters and you tried to fd that shit and you would just die because you couldn't stomp the opponent from doing 50-50 afterwards because you FD'd it because you didn't want to take the chip. Or, you know, maybe you didn't FD it and you still had to deal with it afterwards because, I mean, like, Souls Fafner is, what, plus 17, something more around that? So it's like, eh, guard breaks are okay conceptually. Just some of the guard break moves don't make sense. I can see that, yeah, because, like, I don't know. Behemoth Typhoon and Fafner are, I think, the biggest... Um, are two of the biggest outliers, right? Because, for example, uh, I think Leo's is actually... Oh, Garuda, sorry. What the fuck was I thinking? Garuda is a goddamn war crime. That move is hilarious. <laughs> Leo's, I think, is fair. 
Um, there's, there's like certain, there's a lot of stuff uh, that Leo has to do to actually get his guard break to happen, right? Um, you have to put the fear of God in your opponent or they have to just be shitty at reacting. I am one such person who, I, I don't think my reactions are super great, right? Uh, but like Leo in particular, his his guard break is fine. Garuda, in the situations that you can set Garuda up, it is inescapable, which is what it felt like they were trying to get rid of when they did the the bandit bring uh, bandit revolver change for soul, right? Um, when they when they did the bandit revolver change for soul, it was like okay, Fafnir's not guaranteed after this, this, and this. Now it's it's like things are okay now. If you get Fafnir, it's probably on you, right? Whereas, like, Garuda is like, I fucking hit you. <laughs> Guess who's getting garuda son? Because, <laughs> like, he'll ulti G6K, Garuda, and then you'll have to deal with whatever comes afterwards. Not saying do double Garuda is always going to be, like, guaranteed, right? But Garuda itself is guaranteed in a lot more situations than any other guard break in the game outside of Behemoth Typhoon. Behemoth Typhoon is the other one that's like, Greg, just, just end my life. Just, just actually end my life. <laughs> no, I mean, so like, yes, people do need to calm down on the tier list talk. But the thing is, is that gets a lot of engagement, right? You can post a tier list on Twitter. You can post your, your, I think this is the best character in the game. And everybody will talk to you because they'll either be like, yep, I agree with you. I've known this since like third strike. Uh-huh. Yep. You're right. Or they'll be like, you have to be so fucking stupid to even think that right is like uh, the, the, those are like the two opinions and but they will always engage with that um with that and so it's it's the best thing for you to say as like somebody who's trying to get a little bit of influence right a little bit of clout whatever you want to call it <laughs> yes yeah yeah media garuda still allows you to catch back dashes um and you so like one of the best things you can do is is actually backdash garuda mid screen right because then you get launched right which is away from it but the problem is is obviously he can do hammerfall cancel and get towards you but at the very least you didn't get hit by fucking double garuda that's insane to me you want to take the corner carry more so than you want to block two garudas like that's just i i don't think that that is okay <laughs> so the problem with that is that potemkin without garuda would suck Without that move, I think he would be a bad character. So like, I don't really know what what you would do for that. The thing is, is if you made it so it was slightly worse, then he would be just fine. So I don't I don't want to say take it away, obviously, but I definitely don't think it should be the way that it is. And yeah, I'm sure I'm sure not just you will disagree with me, uh, mutator. But I think that he Garuda is a required part of uh, certain offensive things for him. Otherwise, he would not be able to do certain things. Maybe, maybe suck is just like, you know, probably like a bad way of thinking it, uh, or at least an exaggerated way of thinking of it. But I, I definitely think he would not be able to handle certain characters if he did not have Garuda, which is is kind of the big deal. I mean, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice if Garuda wasn't exactly the way it is. Uh, he'd have to start doing close slash, which is plus four into another close slash. All right. Um, so then how does he deal with the DP character? Right? Like, how does he deal with that? I guess. <laughs> he bit CPs because he's a grappler and he's supposed to have to make reads. All right. So what about Ramlethal then? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> Ramlethal doesn't really have to make that, <laughs> that read in the same situation. She doesn't have pop buster, but she does 80% of your life from, from hits like Soul used to do right now like currently but i like i'm agreeing with you on on garuda we're we're agreeing there there's a slight deviation in the detail of what we're agreeing on so so that i mean you know that's fair right but i i understand that hereka is not only beat by ib into throw um she uh you it, it depends on what the reka that uh you're dealing with it like how many rekas the opponent is doing to tell you what you can deal with right so um for example while we were playing that set i punished reka in different avenues and i also got punished for reka in different avenues but yeah but that, that, that's my point it's not it's not just ib throw that you could do like uh there was there was numerous times where i i punished it um there's also numerous times where i fucked up but you know it'd be like that um it's on the onus of the defender for sure unless well 
There are certain characters that I think probably can do something about it like each time, but I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, but that's another guard break move right there, actually, is Rekka. Um, which uh, it's, they've like, they did the change to Rekka where you can like do the, the dash cancel and like do the infinite. <laughs> well, it's like a fake infinite, but you know what I mean? Yeah, she got to, she has way more reward than she used to be, right? I feel like I've gotten a bit more of a handle on certain aspects of the patch. Um, obviously, there's some characters that I'm not 100% privy on, of course. Uh, there's just not nearly enough Jackos, and I feel like that character is super good. I'm not going to say that she's like top five good, but I think she's, she's, she should be played more than she currently is, right? Whereas like, I think May finally got like, clipped on the kneecaps she's definitely struggling a lot more she has to think like i'm not saying that she's like super bad but she actually has to think now which is really good i'm super happy about that if they could just like tweak her in one or two other ways uh to to bring her back up to certain parts and then take away maybe some of that i don't know i guess damage is supposed to be her big thing now right because they took away the fact that like she's frame trapping you with dolphins and shit <laughs> so like damage is supposed to be the big thing on this one at this point yeah she has to play the fighting game now whereas before she was just like well i'm just gonna stick these buttons right i i definitely don't think she's like the worst character in the game uh i definitely do not think she's the worst character in the game uh and i do think a lot of uh reactions to to uh to, to her at the very beginning were were definitely a little bit weird um i do know that at the very least when you fight her now i don't hate my life which is before it was like just it was i had to be perfect just to do shit to her when i knocked her down i no longer had to be perfect but in neutral i had to be perfect versus her and some characters probably felt that more than others like i play fucking soul right like i am <laughs> i'm good to go versus most characters right that's just that's just how it is but you know it it still felt like that and so, and on defense, etc. Like your six P's needed to be exactly on point because Jump H had the most egregiously weird hitbox I have seen. So like, I'm gonna be real. I think Soul may may not be top three anymore um, post patch. But the problem is, is like he's still like incredible at what he does. You know what I mean? So like, my, my thing is, is I just think the the, the current big characters, the, the the people that I think are are in the top three, well. My, my top two is solidified, but, but third could be soul. It just might not be, right? Um, the characters that I consider to be top two are just so much egregiously stronger right now. I think I think that is where the only power imbalance is at the moment. But the problem is, is it's still early, right? I might be, I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, not going Ram top is is my current top two. I think I think those are the two best characters in the game. But like soul is still hilarious. Um, don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. Uh, obviously, I want I want a little more time of, on it, but uh, I, I like to I like to like bring my thoughts with other people so we can kind of like talk about it. Uh, I'm not saying it's a big gap. I think it's just um, it is there is a gap, which is 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 an important distinction because um, so like like I said, uh, I think Soul is still fucking like great. I think this character is awesome still. I think he's super strong still. Um, but the fact that I think that there are two characters above him for the reason of that they're, they're, they're above him by a, a, at least a margin is, is important. I'm not going to complain if, 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 uh, if somebody says that soul is better than Ramblethal. Uh, if I am wrong about that, then I'm wrong about that. I, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. I just think right now Ramblethal is pretty wild, uh, because of what they changed for her. It's, uh, it's just one of those things where I'm like a, a slightly above mid tier player trying to trying to ascertain character strength and whatnot when I don't know a lot about every character. And so that's kind of like a problem, right? And yeah, it is a thing that we'll also see with time, right? We get to we get to find out more versus Ramlethal. We get to figure out more, what's the word I'm looking for? Not just counterplay, but like just just actually what the strengths are, right? Um, the opponent's character's league's better than mine. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I've never really felt that way. Um, well, actually that's, 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 that's a lie. I played Blaze Blue Central Fiction. I have played Blaze Blue Central Fiction. I know what it's like to have a character be leagues better than my character for sure. And wh what I meant by I, I don't feel that way usually is I meant by Arxis game specifically. Because obviously I've talked about Marvel 3 and, and Smash Brothers, right? Where I know for sure I felt that way in those games. But like in Arxis, I was trying to think about it. And then I realized, yeah, all right. They, these characters are leagues better than mine. I actually, I'm a dumbass, bro. I played Guilty Gear Kai for 20 years. 
he has definitely been leagues worse than other characters <laughs> in, in, in previous versions of the game. Obviously, he's been far and away the best character in the game before. Because your slash existed, right? Kai, Kai with the faith barrage, that was hilarious. But yeah. But yeah, so I, you know, I had to think about it a little bit. I've definitely, I've definitely had that feeling. It's in the newer Arxis games, I haven't felt that nearly as much. I don't really feel that much with, with Exert, I didn't play a character that, that had that feeling, personally. You know, I didn't play Axel, so. I didn't fucking know how shitty life, I didn't play Batman, so I didn't know how shitty life was. In this game, I, I didn't play Soul from the get-go, but I also played Milia when I didn't know what was going on. So I also didn't know if a character was super good or not. The only time I ever felt like Milia was like exploding and dying was open beta Potemkin. When Megafist was impossible to stop, he could just mash jab and anti-air Milia at every avenue, that kind of thing, right? Also, fucking Milia, bro. I'm, I'm happy for her. I'm super happy that she's got like what she's got right now because I, I'm very glad that she gets just a little bit more than she had previously. Prior to this patch, I don't think she was like devastatingly bad or anything like that, but not having a five framer fucking sucked, obviously. She just died to strike throw and she was already a character that couldn't defend. She was already a character with no health, right? There's been technical top tiers in this game. Uh, I think I think Zato is a technical top tier uh, currently. Uh, and I think he was like last patch and shit. I think Zato from the get go has actually been a lot better than than a, lo than a lot of people were saying. Personally, that's just me. I think Zato was, was super, super good. But for me, I look at like, I look at players like Latif and other stuff and I recognize like, yeah, this, this character definitely has the fucking sauce. This character definitely has the tools and whatnot. In fact, like I think Zato has one of the best six Ps um, in, in mid screen because of uh, what he gets for it. It's not that he gets like a big combo, but he does get his little Eddie back usually, right? Or he's in a situation where like, say you, um, say you got little Eddie away, but he's full screen, you killed little Eddie. Uh, invite hell and 6P are things that you can use to stop the opponent until you get little Eddie back. And they're very, very good at what they do. Not saying they're infallible, don't get me wrong, but they're definitely very, very good at what they do. I still think Zato's really good, right? Well, I, I mean, I think he's better right now than he was, you know, before. He's gotten buffed. <laughs> Hi is a character that... He's definitely better than he was before. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I'm never going to say that this character is low tier right now, but I just don't like playing Kai in this game, which is very sad because, again, I've been playing Kai since I was a child. He is the only main that I've ever known for Guilty Gear. Um, even even when I was playing like Testament and, and Anji and like Axel as like secondaries just for fun. It was always Kai, it was always right back to Kai, right? But right now, I just, I just don't like the way he plays in this game. I really don't. And that's not just because of the way he plays, but also the way that the system wants you to play as a character, right? I feel like the system in this game wants you to play a particular way and Kai doesn't play that particular way. So when I play the game and I play with him, I don't think it's fun for me. Um, it could be fun for anybody else. I know a bunch of Kai people that, you know, are not only strong, but they also like have fun with the character, right? Um, so it's, I, yeah, I, I just don't, I even tried to, I was like, the only time I ever felt like I was having fun uh, as Kai was when I was specifically doing combos. When I was doing like the cool combos too, where you had to like, from far distance, you would get the 5K into 6H and then that would wall splat and you could get the, you could get the, uh, the super far away HDP into, into relaunch, that kind of thing, right? That was w when I had fun. But it's like, the, if the character is not fun to me in, in neutral, like what am I? <laughs> I, how am I gonna get to the combo game? You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's 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 like that. Uh, I'm super happy they reverted the or changed the uh, the fireball. So like before, you never wanted to end uh, block strings into fireball on block in the first place, right? Because they were punishable on block before. But you in this game, it's far worse, right? In fact, I'm not even just talking about on block, right? Kai fireballs in neutral were the scariest shit that you could want to do. I mean, obviously I play soul. And so if I had a high player chuck a fireball for me full screen, not even like an H fireball, I could, you can react at Vortex pre-patch and it would be a guaranteed counter hit. 
unless they had Peter to RC it, which is comedy. That's just, that's, that's, that's straight up comedy. Now it's not, not the same. Uh, you can still do it, but it has to be particular ranges. Your reactions have to be on point, which I think is exactly how it should be. You should only be re uh, rewarded for fucking his fireball game up if you brought your, your A plus game, right? That's, that's what I mean. The stun dipper change needed to happen. I don't know what the fuck was going on with that character <laughs> pre-patch when he could not do stun dipper half the time. It was so goddamn inconsistent. It was crazy. Chip. 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 This character is manageable now. This character is like, I think... They don't need to nerf him any further. I think he just needs to stay exactly with him where he's at, like, and what he's doing. If there's like a, a season two, like a year later or whatever, and they start giving characters new moves. Okay, sure, whatever. But like, I think he is exactly where he needs to be. He is just fucked up enough um, in, in knockdown situations that it's cool, but he's not fucked up enough that I feel like I'm always losing to him in the neutral. You know what I mean? No, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that, actually. Uh, I don't want him to go back to joke character status. Uh, I think he's, I think he's, it's a good thing that he's like, he's pretty good. Let's see, what other characters in the game can we talk about right now? All right, we'll talk about Naga real fast, sorry. Uh, because this motherfucker, this motherfucker, Nagori Yuki, Black Excellence. We're big happy that he's best character in the game, of course. He deserves it, he earned it, All right? But holy shit, bro. <laughs> so they most recently gave Nagori Yuki um, less startup on Beyblade from what I remember from the patch, right? And that's already, that move was already like something a lot of people were complaining about. I wasn't as upset about it because I don't know, I guess I just wasn't running my face into fucking Beyblade, right? But uh, so that was a surprising change. Another really surprising change was that they made it so that third hit of Far Slash um, now gives about, what is it, a half of Blood Bar back? Insane. Actually insane. Half of your Blood Gauge, or a Blood Gauge Bar. Excuse me. That is, that is wild. So like, this character's already got a laser beam uh, in 5H when he has uh, level three blood. It's not half of your blood gauge, it's half of a bar of blood gauges and they're three bars. So that, that would be insane if it was half of your blood gauge, obviously. <laughs> but who knows? I don't know, he keeps getting buffed, so <laughs> maybe that'll come next. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like this was a character who, his his game plan was that he was supposed to have uh, super consistent damage because he had a resource to manage for it, right? Whereas like Soul didn't have a resource to manage, so it was fucked up that he could have that amount of damage. And it is still kind of fucked up. It's not as fucked up as it was like when, you know, the game first dropped. Don't get me wrong. It barely feels like he has that trade off anymore thanks to the far slash change. Now, of course, you cannot go into all three hits of far slash on every single combo. It is just not possible. But, you know, that's that's what meter management and whatnot is for, um, is you as an Agora Yuki player have to manage that. And it, even, even now, though, You'll see like Hotashi, uh, you know, Uriel Legion and all those other top Nagori Yuki players, right? Because there's more and I'm sorry for only saying a few. Um, they will go into Blood Rage uh, in, in, um, in a lot of matches and they'll be fine with it. They'll be totally cool with Blood Rage, right? Um, and it's, it's astounding because it's like it's, it's somehow it's not enough of a detriment, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. That's just pretty wild to me. Uh, he's obviously got a lot of other stuff. He's got like... You know, I mentioned the consistently high damage. Uh, the dude outpaces most characters in terms of the damage war. Um, he has crazy plus frame frames on clone. Uh, now, now because of the clone change, uh, clone is faster. It goes like full screen. Fukio into clone is. I think if you do it up close, it's like plus five or something like that. There was I, I you know, Fame showed it off where where he can be plus five after clone cancel. Ramlethal is she has so much reward off of everything now, um, and she has one of the best um, stop gaps in the game. So her big problem before, which was keeping her in check, was that she got jack shit. It's great. She didn't get fucking anything, bro. It was it was really like she had to use meter, right? And now she can get a bunch mid screen. Obviously, they still have to be particular hits. She's not going to hit you with 5K, no meter, no counter hit, you know, no aerial connection mid screen and get anything other than like Daro, right? 
or you know uh uh far slash heavy slash she's not really gonna get that right now i mean uh and she didn't get it before obviously but now she does get other shit mid screen that she wasn't going to get before thanks to the changes and so she now has this like insane corner game that uh obviously does have counterplay don't get me wrong um that on top of also having the mid screen game uh which is really really strong it's it's very akin to soul it's very very akin to soul actually like i, I feel like a lot of my comparisons when i talk about ramlethal could be almost exactly the same as souls um because she also does uh, similar damage to him nowadays not in every aspect. I think I think his damage is probably higher on average, but she's very close to him now. It's uh, it's it's just wild. She's she's running amok because she also has some of the best like spacing tools in the entire game. On top of that, right? Axel, that jump S change needed to happen. I don't care what anybody says. That character was about to be top three that last patch if they didn't do something. <laughs> that shit was wild. I was I was almost certain that character was top three last patch. <laughs> almost, I, I should say. Uh, but yeah, yeah. 2k buff is crazy it's super good yes the 2k buff so so he now has a five framer uh just like every other character in the game so like this patch everybody got a, a five frame obviously right which is another reason why i think gold lewis is, is probably uh still pretty good by the way is because now he can like fight his way out but uh same thing for axel is that now he has a five frame 2k that is meant to low profile goes incredibly far for i want to say most 2ks in the game uh, I'm not going to say every single one because you have characters like Potemkin and whatnot who are just quite literally larger than he is. But, you know, for what it is, it's very, very good in that regard. So I think that's like the crazy part. They did change other stuff that did nerf him. Uh, other than the jump S. I'm trying to figure or remember what they are off the top of my head. But the jump S one was the one I personally cared about the most because I felt like if I was if I knew an Axel player was going to jump, and I got over him. I was like, okay, I this is what I want to do is I want to get over him and get a counter hit and then combo off it because I know he's going to do this. And I'm not at the range where 6P is going to hit because like, so, you know, J Jump S would, would go like at this angle, right? So it goes here and then it hits your toes and you can't 6P. But if you air dash from here, you could get over him and then you could hit, right? Pre-patch, you were never hitting him ever jump s was always hitting a buff for some reason and it was just fucking wild dude it was like okay so i read you and i still lost like <laughs> that's that seems pretty egregious to me right so the jump s one is the one i care about because i think that's that was the thing that just shouldn't have been <laughs> um i am cool with axel just being amazing he can be one of the best characters i don't think he's one of the best characters right now but like, I think it's fine. I, I, there's always going to be a best character. There's always going to be somebody who's ridiculous and stupid, right? But there should be like a rhyme and a reason to it. There should be an availability of counterplay. And there's that that jump S felt like it was impossible uh, at, at certain distances, mind you. Not going to say everywhere, right? But yeah, so nowadays you can do it. You can you can jump over him and get that uh, that jump ass and you can deal with him in different ways. He, the funny part about Axel, and I'm sure a lot of people will be upset at me about for saying this uh, because they, they die to Axel all the time. I think he's the thinking he's a thinking man's character. If if you are getting perfected by Axel, that's on you. You fucked up and you fucked up hardcore, right? Even even pre patch when that jump ass shit was happening, right? because he has to very specifically pick the spots that he's going to toss shit at you, unless you're certain characters. Certain characters didn't have the same options to be able to deal with him pre-patch, right? A lot of people want to probably use the, the Axel versus Gold Lewis matchup as an example. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people are saying personally, because Axel also dies to Gold Lewis when he gets knocked down. Like Axel literally can't do anything. But you know, I'm just saying, I don't think it was that bad. And then the neutral was also different than a lot of people were saying. Certain characters do have a harder time. Don't give me wrong. Again, I'm privileged. I play soul. I could literally just run at him and I could eventually kill him if I messed up six or eight times because all I have to do is get in twice and then I'm good to go. He has to, he has to stop me six or eight times, right? But that's the thing is he's the thinking span character. You know, he has to do it six or eight times and it's, it's just harder and harder for that character. So again, I, like I, I'm totally fine if he was, if he was like the best character in the game as long as he had 
counterplay. So that's the reason why the jump pass nerf is stuck in my head so much is because I think that is the big deal. Personally. Faust, that, that boy got a glow up. I'm glad, I'm glad for him. I don't think he was like, well, no, I, I definitely thought he was the worst character in the game. Uh, I thought he was way worse than AG. But as, as time went on, people showed me the light that he was, uh, he was definitely better than, than most characters, or at least definitely better than Angie. Uh, I used to think that Angie was the was was better than Faust, as a, on a personal level, right? I was just like, oh yeah, he's got he's got this, this, and that. I don't understand why he's not better than Faust. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not correct, <laughs> especially not now, because most people aren't even playing Angie anymore, right? Also, when it comes to Angie specifically, it felt like all the people that were playing Angie, well, most of the people, I should say, sorry. Most of the people that were playing Anji when he came out on launch of this game was they were waiting for a character for them or their character to get put in the game. Kid Viper was playing Anji, Gold Lewis showed up, mostly a Gold Lewis player now, right? Um, etc. etc. Uh, there's other people, you know, there's Lost Soul, there's you know, other people. Obviously, there's the loyalists who are still playing Anji because they played Anji in all the other games, but yeah, the, the, the point it just felt like. Anji was the character that most people were playing because they were waiting for another character to come back or a character that suited their fit, uh, suited their play style a bit more. Cause I, I can't really speak on Jacko too much uh, other than I think that she's pretty good because she's, her minions in particular are very hard to deal with now that you can toss them and do specifically what you want with them at, oh, Giovanna, I'll talk about her in a sec. Jacko, she can make herself egregiously plus or oddly safe at times when she shouldn't be. Um, thanks to that. Thanks to the minion toss and thanks to the, the kicks and whatnot. All right. Um, I, I find her to be very hard to deal with in this game. Uh, but again, I haven't run in her, into her enough to really know the problems to then lab it out because I need, for me, I need to see something to be able to figure out how to, how to fight it. I can't just go into training mode, learn the character real fast, right? It takes me a while to learn a character in my personal opinion. She is, uh, Jacko is different in this game than she was in Exert Tiara. So she's not like any, any Exert meme, unfortunately is, not, well, most Exert memes are not uh, apl as applicable in, in Shrive. Um, they, they changed the character to work with this system a bit better. But Giovanna, uh, she has always been fucked up from, from the jump. That character has always been insane. I've never thought that she was the top three at any point. I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, un unsure about that but she easily has she easily has the best dash in the game um without question uh which also affords to her one of the best mix-up potentials in the entire game right she has soul close slash into a easier mix-up than soul does um which is very very surprising um she's got pretty good damage she has an incredibly consistent way to break the wall from mid-screen she has it all. Um, and so, uh, also she has the best QD. She has the best button in the entire game. Excuse me, is the best button in the entire game in 2D. That move is a Sarkis. Like it's just, <laughs> that move is a Sarkis for sure. But for all of those strengths on paper, I feel like every time that character is played, or somebody is playing that, uh, or, or somebody's playing that character against me, I never feel like her neutral is as strong as as strong as 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 it should be on paper, right? I feel like all these things happen on paper. It just doesn't happen when people play, and I don't know if that's like an execution thing, or if the people playing her just are not really as consistent or whatever. But yeah, um, I don't think she has. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure if she has a losing matchup uh, at the moment but I don't know if that's actually the case, right? Like I th I'm, I'm certain she, she probably has some five bots, right? But it's it's hard to say what she has um, as, as a matchup. But I know it sounds pretty wishy-washy, my ideas on Geo, but like it's, it's the inconsistency of a lot of Giovanna players that uh, make me confused because like I'll watch this character. I'll be like, yeah, on paper, this looks like she's a top fucking two character, but then it never happened. And so I, my problem is is that i cannot currently ascertain as to why she is not performing to the level to the degree 
you know, it's because like obviously there's a lot of players uh, players that are not nearly as strong as some of the other players playing like Soul, for example, right? Um, she's kind of a niche character right now. Um, she she's not exactly like she's not Jacko where you literally never see her, but she's also not uh, she's not even as popular as like Potemkin, I would say, right? Like who I don't think is a very popular character right now either. But yeah, I think I think she's really good. I just I struggle to place her. She's very amorphous. I, I struggle to place her concretely because of the inconsistencies with that character so far. Um, I feel like I feel like it's one of those things where we just need more time with this character. I, I think we need more time with Giovanna, which is fine. Um, it took us a lot of time in Marvel 3 to find Morgan, right? People thought Morgan was like a low tier character. Turns out she's 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 got a zero losing matchups in Marvel 3, right? Uh, that kind of shit. Uh, it, it took people to figure out what, what Chun-Li's niche was in Marvel 3. It took people forever to figure out a bunch of shit, really. Like, there's there's a lot of fighting games that, that a lot of people had, like, really weird conceptions about and stuff like that. But yeah, so... I think that's most of the characters. So we, we went through pretty much everybody. I mostly talked about Potemkin's Garuda, so I didn't exactly talk about Potemkin too much. But I, I personally don't think there's a lot to talk about about the character. I think he's... At a baseline, he's 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 fine. It's just Garuda is fucked up beyond belief. Oh, Leo, I never really got a good talk about Leo. I only talked about his guard break. Leo in particular, I've always had a weird thought process about because I've always done very, very well uh, versus Leo players in bracket. Um, I've actually only lost to one Leo player in bracket before, and it was actually like an internet. Uh, like, I, I know it sounds really dumb, but like I actually... It was actually like an internet issue. Like I, I, I literally couldn't play in that connection. But you know, it'd be like that, right? I, I hate saying shit like that because then it sounds like I'm fucking like jotting about my loss. Like you know, I, maybe the person can beat me in person or whatever. It's fine. But like, if a connection is really hard to play, and a connection is really hard to play, I've always had a weird uh, skew, and I've always thought he is. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always personally thought he was uh, not nearly as strong as everybody's been saying. The problem with that is. is so I have I have skewed thoughts because the Leo players I play in Oregon are a particular type of Leo player. Uh, they do very specific things, and I I tend to call out specific specific things if you're doing them over and over again, which our Leo players do quite a bit. So because of that, I I I feel like I understand. I I get this idea that I have figured the character out, right? That I've solved the character or whatever, which is not true because, you know, I've played other Leo players and I've had, I've had trouble with them, right? Uh, I've played, I've played other Leo players on the tower and I've had trouble, right? And then I see some of the top Leo players doing completely different things than some of the other ones. And I go, okay, this is like an, uh, a problem of, of our Leo players. I still think he's a bit overrated, but I don't think I've solved the character like I thought. I think he's consistently, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, consistently like above most characters in terms of strength um, because back turn Leo is legitimately one of the hardest characters to deal with, right? Uh, back turn Leo is incredibly good. There's, uh, there's, there's no doubt about that in my mind. But I think front facing Leo has uh, has has several different problems. Also, I play Soul, right? So like those problems get exploited, <laughs> uh, like because because if he makes a mistake, again, I'm a character that can actually do damage. Leo has to feel the full brunt of his mistakes. And and versus Soul, for example, you don't want to get flash kick happy. Whereas like versus a, a lot of other characters, I feel like you have that luxury, like you can get flash kick happy. But versus Soul, you can't do it because even if you flash kick at round start. Soul takes 65% of Leo's health at round start if you flash kick. So it's just not fucking worth it. And that's the, you know, again, round start, so it's it's meterless, right? It's mid-screen. He does three attacks and it's 65% of your life, right? Or four attacks because of the 6H. Uh, he, he does need to kind of choose uh, DP because if you, so say you block the, um, say you block the grounded DPs, your punish uh, is going to be harder on SDP than it is H because of the, the the change in in type. It also depends on the character for sure. Cause like some characters, they, it, it doesn't change anything, right? I think for Axel, it's probably the same fucking thing. But yeah, uh, I could be wrong about that, but you know, but yeah. So I, I think I think Leo's really good. I think back turn is incredible. I think his mix is legitimate. I think front facing is uh, slightly more problematic than people tend to realize personally. Um, 
but again, I need I need to play versus more varied types of Leo players. Uh, cause I I just I just feel like I've gotten a lot of my ideas uh, versus the same three Leo players that I play every week. All right, which is you know, they, they could be the best same three Leo players, right? They could be the best in the world. But I get a specific idea of their Leo than than like other Leos. And the the character in neutral when he's front placing can actually be played different ways. Uh, when he's back turn, he's the same fucking character. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, so the problem is, is like, I am not the most knowledgeable player on the, the, the planet, right? Um, I have my... I have my thoughts uh, and other people have theirs. I've been wrong, I've been right. The the one thing that I really don't like is just having to make a tier list every 12 seconds. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I'm not the big bad influencer commentator that I could be is because I don't follow all the trends. You know, it'd just be like that.